are some patient people. Some people are very, very patient. Um, and some people are just not. And let's just be honest that when it comes to the word of patience, um, I think we sometimes misunderstand even what patience is. I think sometimes we get so caught up in uh, what we think uh, the scripture says that we forget to actually really read what it says. And uh, the passage that the lieutenant read for us is a great example of somebody who was patient and waited upon the Lord. Someone who we all know, and we've all lived this, haven't we, in our lives, whether we've been a Christian a long time or not, there have been moments that maybe frustration has come because God hasn't necessarily acted either in, in, the, timely, in the time frame that we wanted him to. Um, and if you haven't experienced that, I'm sure you probably will. But there's moments in our lives where we want God to move quicker than he does. And we still get frustrated even though we've been through those examples or we've been through those experiences and we've seen God's faithfulness, yet still in our humanness, frustration can come. And as was read to us, it was a great example of a man of, 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 of Simeon's character of righteousness who had to wait upon the Lord. He was promised something and I'm sure there were moments where it was like, is this ever going to happen? Is this ever going to happen? Am I ever going to see this Christ child? Is this ever going to happen? But one thing I want to mention uh, just before we go to how does this apply to us very quickly is notice that Simeon was filled with what? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's a really important piece in this scripture. In Luke chapter 2, if you still have your Bibles open, uh, in verse 25. Verse 25, there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. That same Holy Spirit that, we're gonna, that we've been talking about over the last few weeks and continue to do as we look as the gift of the Spirit, these, 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 these fruits, these, sorry, these fruits of the Spirit, this, this, this fruit that is within us. And again, even as I say the word fruits, we all think, oh, hang on a minute, it's not fruits, is it? It's fruit, singular. That's what it is. It's the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's within us and we then must cultivate, we must cultivate that. This word patience is what we're going to be looking at today. It's uh, different in different translations. If you turn... Uh, because all of you have slightly different translations, I'm sure, into Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, just to remind ourselves of what we're looking at today. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Again, it's on the screen for you. And on the front of your bulletins, but Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against, against such things there is no law. This fruit of the Spirit. Patience, some, uh, some scripture, some versions uh, have the word forbearance. Bearing with one another, forbearance, or long-suffering. Um, I don't know whether I always... Uh, equate patience with long suffering and I thought about these these definitions these different translations of this word patience thinking about what does that mean for us what does that look like as we think about what it means to cultivate the gift that we have of patience turn with me if you will to first Peter first Peter First Peter chapter three. And we're going to begin at uh, verse 18. Where we're going to begin right in the middle of that verse, verse 18. First Peter three, right in the middle of uh, verse 18. 
He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. This is Jesus, through whom also he went and preached the Spirit in prison, who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. Here we have the first example referring all the way back to Genesis. All the way back to Genesis at that moment where God said, I'm going to wipe out the face of this earth. These people that I have created who are evil and sinful and wicked, I'm just going to wipe them out. However, if you remember, if you remember and if you want to look back for your reference later on in Genesis chapter 6, it says that there was a righteous man, a man in the eyes of God who was righteous, and that man was Noah. Here, God's patience, his long-suffering, his forbearance, his patience with his people. The reason why I want to go all the way back to Genesis is because that's where it began. The gift of the Holy Spirit we see as exampled, as, as shown to us by God. Verse 20, God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was built. I mean, God could have just gone, there Noah, there's an ark. Off you go. But he said, no, here Noah, let me show you how. Let me show you how. I will wait patiently because you are a righteous man. And you serve me. Flip over to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3. It's not just God who is patient. 2 Peter chapter 3. We have read this scripture more in the last six months from this platform than we have for a very, very long time of anything. But Second Peter. Second Peter, it's actually chapter two, my apologies. No, it's not, it's chapter three. That was right. I can't read my writing. My writing is terrible. <laughs> oh dear. Second Peter chapter three, verse fifteen. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation. Just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Look back to verse 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Here, Christ's example of patience is that he died for us, a sinful people. And yet in Christ's forgiveness, in his love, in his care, in his patience with a people who he says, I want to give you, I want to show you what it means to have salvation. Verse 9, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Now, I've heard that scripture taken completely out of context. Oh, well, you know, God it just loves everybody. And so, because He loves everybody, therefore He's going to wait and He's going to wait and He's going to wait because He doesn't want anybody, anyone to, to perish or anyone to, 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 to fall. And so, He's just going to wait until everybody believes. Well, I don't read that in the rest of Scripture and I don't read that in the context of this Scripture. What I hear is, friends, we don't know the time or the day. But two things I think we can learn from seeing Jesus' patience here. His patience is wearing out, friends. His patience is getting less and less. And the challenge for us, I pray, I pray the challenge for you and me, that time frame, that, that, that the time frame for when Jesus is going to come back a second time, when Jesus is going to come back a second time and take those that believe to be with him, the time frame is getting shorter each and every day. So the challenge for us as Christians is what are we doing about it? 
How are we sharing Jesus with other people? And are we doing it fervently? Are we doing it expectantly? Are we doing it with all the energy and all the enthusiasm and everything that we have? Or are we just coming to church on Sunday and going, there's another box I checked. Or are we so concerned about those who don't know Jesus and what is going to happen to them in eternity that our first priority is showing them Jesus. The time is coming when there won't be any more. Oh, Jesus, just give me a second. Just give me another second so I can, I can share with my family member. I can share with my friend. I can share with my work colleague. I was so close. I was so close to, to asking the question. I was so close to seeing if they wanted to accept Jesus. I was so close. So close is just not good enough. So close might as well be a thousand miles away. How we share Jesus is very, very important. James, James chapter 5. James chapter 5 verse 7. So if God is patient with us, if, if Jesus is patient with us, if, if the Holy Spirit, it is his gift to us, then what is our responsibility? James chapter 5 verse 7. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. Let me just say this real quick. Patience does not equal lonely, uh, laziness. Patience does not equal laziness. Just because the farmer waits, he's still preparing. He's still getting ready. The problem is when we think about patience sometimes, we think about, oh, well, I don't really have to do anything. I'm going to wait. I'm just going to kind of wait and do nothing. I'm going to wait upon the Lord. I've heard this so many times. I'm going to wait upon the Lord. I'm just going to let him do his thing. And, and when he challenges me to, you know, to, to, to pray, then I'll pray. Or when he challenges me to, to go to this place, then, then I'll go to this. No, 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 no. To wait upon the Lord is an active <coughs> waiting. To be patient with others is to be active with others. Whether we are sharing the gospel with somebody... Even before we get to that point, I pray that we are praying for them. I pray that we are, are on our knees before the Lord for them. I pray that we are taking them to the throne of grace. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. What comes at the Lord's coming? Well, the judgment, yes? The judgment the judgment between good and evil, between those who believe and those who don't. And we don't like to talk about that too much in churches, but it's happening, it's going to happen, and we need to be ready. However, I think it also challenges us to determine how we judge other people and how quick we are to judge. I don't know about you, but there are times where I just want to judge my boys like anything. Like I'll throttle them. I, like I'm even doing the hand motion. Because it's the first thing that I, that I do. Like, like I hear a noise. And right away I think they're doing something wrong. Right away. And, and I know I shouldn't. But I do. Why? Because usually because of history. 
or, or worse than that when it's quiet and, they're not, <laughs> and I can't hear what they're doing. My natural instinct is to say something is wrong or to judge that they're doing something wrong. You need to be patient. We do it not just with our children, we do it with each other. We do it so often without all the facts and without all the information. We jump to those conclusions without being patient with one another, bearing with one another, being long in our suffering with one another. Verse 8 of James chapter 5. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Be patient and stand firm. Thought about these, these words, stand firm. Being patient and standing firm. How do, I, how do I stand firm? My mind went straight to the armor of God where it says put on all of this stuff. Put on everything, the, all that God has given you. And after you have done so, to stand. Standing firm on the word of God. Standing firm on his promises. Not automatically doing what many of us do and going to our human nature and allowing that to drive what the Lord would have us do. Walking humbly before our God. Verse 9. Don't grumble against each other or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. There's a lot of judging this morning. A lot of judging this morning. Don't grumble against each other. In other words, be patient with one another. Like be patient with one another. The longer that that, that I'm, I'm married, the, the older I get, the, the longer, the older my boys get, the longer I'm alive, the longer I'm on this earth, the longer I've been in the work environment, the quicker it is for me to grumble. The quicker it is for me to grumble. And you might be like, well, shame on you, Captain. You shouldn't be grumbling. You should be patient. Here's what I would have you do first. Before you start throwing stones my way, just take a look in the mirror for a second. Just in the last couple of days even. Think about how much you've grumbled. How much you've complained about stuff. And probably most of that stuff and most of those people have not a clue. The people have no idea that there's anything even wrong. But you'd never do it to their face, would you? You'd never do it to their face. Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, we're coming back to James 5. I'm going to use this lighter. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 2. Probably a very, very familiar passage to many of you. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. I'm glad that the word bearing is in there. Because there are times where I love people, I care about people, I just don't necessarily like what they do. I kind of bear with them. I bear with them. Because I see the sin in people and you might be like, yeah, but Captain, we're supposed to love everybody. Yeah, yeah, we're supposed to love everybody. But if we're not hating sin, we're missing the mark. We're missing the mark. Friends, there is being patient with one another 
There is no room for being patient with sin. I want to be impatient with sin. I don't want to have a long suffering relationship with sin because that's just what it will be. It will be long suffering. Back to James chapter 5. Verse 10. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. I love sometimes how simple Scripture is. I love how sometimes Scripture is just so completely simple when we read it. Suffering, patience in suffering, look at those who have died for the faith. They can't really say anything else. And if we're all honest, have we, have any of us, really suffered like this? None of us truly even really know what suffering for the faith is. And when we may have seen it, and some of us may even have, have felt it to a stage, to a degree, but we're still here. None of us have died for our faith. And my question, one more than that, would be, are we prepared to do that? I was challenged this week when I read that verse. Am I prepared to die for my faith? Am I prepared to die for Jesus? Do I have the patience enough in God's will to be done that he would take care of everything else that was left behind? Because that's where our mind goes, doesn't it, right away. Oh, yeah, I'll, I will. I, I'd be ready. But who would take care of this? And who would take care of this? And what would happen to this? And, and how, would that, how would that affect everything else that takes place in, in my small life? Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Those who spoke in the name of the Lord, who were ridiculed and spat upon. Those who had to bring some really challenging news. Those, again, that even maybe had to die for what they shared. Our suffering doesn't seem quite so bad now, does it? The things that we're going through. <clears throat> Verse 11. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord fully brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. How do we have patience? We persevere. We keep going. We keep God as our focus. And we persevere. How can we do it? Because the Lord is full of compassion and full of mercy. <coughs> Friends, I believe that showing patience is showing Christ. Showing patience is in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of rush and anxiety and angst, is showing Christ. And I challenge you in your relationships, the human relationships that you have with others, are you being patient and showing Christ? Or are you so quick to get on their case about something that all they see is somebody who is just trying to get on them and on them and on them and push them down and push them down or are you showing Christ to them? Are you showing and being patient with them? Friends, patience is tough. Patience is hard. But friends, what is the alternative? If we have no patience, 
If we are impatient, what does it turn into? It turns into anger. It turns into frustration. You know, it even turns into hopelessness. Anything somebody does can never match up. Finally, 2 Timothy. Chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 2. It's not just how we live relationally with others in our human form. It also relates to how we share with others on a spiritual level. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke and encourage. That's almost always what I hear when anyone preaches from this text, whenever we read from this text. That is what Scripture is used for. Fantastic. But how often do we spend time with great patience and careful instruction? With great patience. Friends, Not everybody is going to get it. Let me just blow that myth out of the water. Not everybody is going to get it. I wish they would. I wish they did. But they don't. There are people that I've prayed for for many, many years who I invested in and spoke to and shared with on numerous occasions. And yet still, to my knowledge, never accepted Christ. And that breaks my heart every single time. And I'm like, God, why didn't they get it? Did I do something? Did I do something? Or didn't I do enough? Or did I do something wrong? Or, or... And then God says, not everybody's going to get it. Not everybody's going to get it. You did what I called you to do. But be patient. Because there are still people in my life that I'm praying for. Similar to you, I'm sure. People in my life that I might just get it. Why don't you get it? Why don't you understand who Jesus is? Why don't you understand what a difference he can make? The freedom and hope and forgiveness that he can give. Why don't you get it? And maybe even people here this morning that are like, man, I wish I did get it. I wish I did get it, but, but I don't. And I don't know why. Friends, because I think we're not patient. We're not patient enough to allow God to be God and let Him do His thing. Because when we truly understand who Jesus is, when we really truly understand the forgiveness and the freedom that that brings. Friends, that's freedom with, with no guilt, with no strings attached. The only thing is to love the Lord, your God, with your heart, your soul, and your mind, and your strength. Preach the word, do it. But with great patience and careful instruction. Friends, I might say something now that you're like, wow, I never thought I heard that from a platform and that's okay. There may be times in a conversation where bringing up Jesus is not the most appropriate time. You can change that conversation. You can move that conversation. I would encourage you to do so. I would encourage you to continue in those relationships, to build those moments and those opportunities that the Holy Spirit gives you, to take those opportunities to share Jesus. But there be maybe moments where pulling out your Bible and saying, let me read to you 
whatever verse I can pick out right now, uh, that one, just because I feel like it. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the cloud, pillar of cloud that kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. That might apply amazingly to someone you're talking to. And others, maybe not. Because here's the thing, friends. If we're doing it for ourselves, then we're missing the point. To share the word, to preach the word with patience and great understanding. That is what Christ desires for us to do. I mean, Jesus, didn't he? We see it all the time. Where he took a conversation through a parable to something about his heavenly father. What does it mean to be patient? It means to show Christ. So my question for you this morning is this. Are you showing Christ to others by being patient in your interactions with them? Or are you not? And the only way we do that is by cultivating that gift of the spirit of patience with inside of us. Showing Christ. There's a chorus that may be uh, unfamiliar to some of you, may be familiar to some, but uh, the words are going to be on the screen. And I think some of us this morning, many of us this morning, maybe need that fresh touch of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. We've kind of been running on empty for a while. You might be like, I've been trying the whole, the whole, you know, love, peace, patience, patience kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I've been trying all that stuff, but I, 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 just, I just don't seem to be getting it. Well, if we're running on empty with the Holy Spirit, then no wonder why. Do you need a fresh touch of the Spirit of the living God on you today? Filling you anew. Making you anew. Spirit of that, a Spirit of the Lord. Fall afresh on me. We're going to sing this in a moment. I'm going to have Rochelle play it through. As we just take a, a moment to contemplate what it means to have the Spirit of the Lord fall afresh on us. To be patient with those around us. Dads, are you patient with your kids? Are you patient with your wife? Wives, are you patient with your husbands and with your children? Grandparents, are you patient with your kids and grandkids? Sisters and brothers, are you patient <laughs> with your siblings? Co-workers, are you patient with each other? Friends, are you patient with each other? Kids, are you patient with your parents? Grandkids, are you patient with your grandkid, with your grandparents? I don't know about you, but if we're all honest, we probably fall short in, in some form or another. Maybe you need to come this morning and maybe you want to kneel or, or stand at our holiness table and say, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Fall afresh today. And so we're going to take just a, a few moments. If you want to come, if you want to kneel, if you want to stand, if you want to take this time just to say, maybe you need to seek forgiveness from somebody for not being patient. Not as patient as you could be anyway, with the help of the Holy Spirit.